A big European satellite is about to fall out of orbit, and no one knows where the debris will hit. It is more than a ton of hardware due for a final plunge to Earth tomorrow night or early Monday. Jeffrey Kluger is editor at large for Time magazine. Good morning, Jeffrey. Good morning. I feel a sense of nervousness to hear <laughs> that 25 to 45 yeah, fragments. Should we be worried? Uh, a little bit worried, but not unduly so. Look, whenever you have one ton of hardware coming down, no one knows where. That's not a good thing. Uh, it, it was intended to orbit at about 160 miles. It's currently down to about 105 miles. It's lost a dozen miles in just one day. And its orbit is, is accelerating. It's 88 minutes to get around the world now. The faster it goes, the lower it goes, the lower it goes, the more it speeds up. And that ends in kaboom. Ultimately. This was oh, they ultimately knew this was going to happen when they, they ultimately this. knew this was going to happen and this is the thing all space debris comes down at some point the yeah. only way a dead satellite doesn't come down is if you park it up in what's called a graveyard orbit 22,000 miles up it'll stay there for centuries this one we knew was coming down it was flying low anyway it only has a small putt putt ion engine on it that's good for <laughs> fine maneuvers but it's not good for getting it out of harm's way so this one was definitely going to come down at some point or other. So ease my nerves. Tell me where they predict this thing could be falling. Uh, they predict this Your thing house. could, no. could no. be falling. <laughs> exactly. I, I'm convinced it's on 75th Street. Um, they predict it could be going, it could drop at any arbitrary point on the surface of the world. I wish I could be more promising than that. But here's the thing. 70% of the world is water. Only 30% is land. And of the 30% that's land, only a small portion of that is actually inhabited by people. There's mm -hmm. vast, vast quantities of, of desolate, empty terrain. Also, what will survive the plunge will be about, it's estimated at 45 pieces of debris, none more than 200 pounds, mm -hmm. and it'll all land within a footprint of 190 square miles. Now, if that footprint is your house, if that footprint is Soldier Field during a Bears game, that's a very bad day. Right. But the odds are that's <laughs> to not, to, to say the least, <laughs> the odds are that's not going to happen. There are actually a lot of these satellites up there, aren't there, Jeffrey? There are, and we report this on Time.com this weekend. Um, there are, well, there, we have a massive, massive debris field in space. That's, it's actually a belt around the Earth. We've been firing stuff up here for, for more than 60 years now. And just in the last few years, we've had some other vehicles auger in. In 2011, there was an American craft. There was a Russian craft. Skylab hit the Australian outback in 1979. Right. Mir came down, the Russian space station plunged in the ocean in 2001. Right. So these things so far have not hurt anybody, but so far it doesn't mean definitely not. But tell me this is a learning lesson that we've now changed the protocol for when these things are sent up and how they're going to come down. Um, I wish I could tell you that. We haven't. The only way we have changed this is with, with Skylab. We truly were caught unprepared. Typically we have engines now to boost these things back up. But the other way to look at this is this is the cost of doing business. If you want global cell coverage, if you want global coverage of the Olympics, if we want our satellite, if uh, satellite um, weather satellites, if we want GPS, we got to have satellites up there doing it. We just have to know how to dispose of them. The good news is them. no one's ever been hurt. So no Jeffrey one's ever Kluger, been hurt. Thank you so much.